All right, so in this video, we are gonna demonstrate goniometry and manual muscle testing for the knee. So that will include extension and flexion. So for goniometry, the patient is supine and we're gonna start. So the knee is very much like the elbow in that we cannot only measure, how should I say this? We're always gonna measure extension and flexion and we're gonna document flexion. So we're gonna document right knee flexion AROM zero to 150, let's say. And the zero is the extension number and the 150 is the flexion number. So we're gonna measure both, but in the documentation, it's only gonna say flexion. Okay, so let me go back to the beginning, what stuff that I skipped. Knee flexion extension happens in the sagittal plane. The end feel for extension is firm. The end feel for flexion is soft. Normal value is zero to 150. Zero again being the extension component and the 150 being the flexion component. So just like the elbow, we need to see with our goniometer, we need to be able to um, account for any hyperextension that exists. So we're gonna put a little towel roll underneath the ankle. And actually that's enough for you. For some people, so I want you to come around to this side because I want you to see a lateral view. Let me take this out for a second. If she had hyperextension, the, the table would prevent us from seeing that. And if I put a little towel roll under, I know that that's high enough because I can like, it's not even touching the table. Some people that won't be enough and you've either got to double it up or use a, an extra towel, but for you, it's just fine. All right, so I'm going to palpate also just like the elbow. You really need to trust your eyes when you're, when you're measuring the extension. So if it looks straight, it's probably straight. If it looks hyperextended, you know, if it looks like, oh my gosh, it's obvious that they're, they're lacking a few degrees and they can't get it all the way straight, just make sure that you trust your eyes because when this fulcrum goes up or down, like just a little hair, it really does change the overall value by quite a bit. So it's, um, it's really sensitive, I should say. Okay, so I'm gonna have you roll this leg in and out. I'm gonna feel for this hip bone. I need to palpate greater trochanter. Good, take a little break, I got it. And I'm gonna line up we line up the fulcrum with the axis of motion at the knee or the lateral at the condyle of the femur. Whoops. And I'm gonna have you push that knee down into the bed as far as it'll go. And so that's lined up there. And then my moving arm goes to that lateral uh, malleolus and she's at zero. So she's got a fully straight knee. Now, you can take a little break. You, can, you don't have to do a quad set anymore. Come on close so that you can see this goniom the goniometer. It's really important that you guys can differentiate between hyperextension and lack of full extension, which might be different on the, on the left side. And so here's the trick that I do. If it ends up here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even, my brain's not working. Is that hypermobile? Is that hypermobile? What is it? I do an exaggerated motion. So I go, well, if her knee looked like this, that would clearly be hyperextension. So I know that anything on this side of the zero is hyperextension. Or I could do an exaggerated, well, if she looked like this, I know for sure she's less than zero. So anything on this side of the zero is hypo, you know, it's less than a full extension. So give yourself like a little visual, give yourself an, ex an exaggerated and you'll be like, oh, that's obvious now. This is my less than zero, and this is my hypermobility down here, okay? So that was extension. Now we're gonna do flexion. So I'm gonna take this towel roll out of here, and I'm gonna have you, actually, let me, I was doing too much talking, and I let go of your, okay, good, take a little break. So I still have her greater trochanter. Now I'm gonna have you slide the heel of your foot along the bed up to your bottom as far as it'll go. I'm gonna measure it first, and then I'll talk to you about some common errors that we see in comp tests. So center of motion, axis of motion, is where my fulcrum's going, which is pretty much where lateral, lateral condyle of the femur is. Moving, uh, station arm goes right to that greater trochanter. Now, if her knee was straight, it would be up there, right? So there's my zero, and it's gonna, it's gonna move this way. And then I'm bringing this down to that lateral malleolus, and she's got 135 degrees of knee flexion. Stay right there. A common error that we see is a learner is measuring the knee 
and she has the she says the right thing slide your your heel up towards your bottom and then all of a sudden they're here and they're measuring hip flexion instead of knee flexion or you might have a learner who says um, bring this back down i want you to bring your knee to your chest so they give the cues for hip flexion and then they're measuring knee flexion so i'm just pointing that out to make sure that you can stay diligent when you are doing this part of the body in comp testing that you can make sure you don't mix those two up okay so we are moving on to an MT. So let's do, you're on the table, so let's do flexion first. I'll just have you roll over. When someone is prone, I tend not to give them a pillow under their head because we don't want them rotated and then extended. Although you're not rotated at all, you're super comfy right there? Yeah. Okay, so I just measured your right, so I'm going to come over here to measure your right. Actually, can you scooch down a little bit so your toes are just hanging off the edge of the table? Good, perfect. Okay, so for knee flexion, I'm gonna say, can you bend this knee up as far as it'll go? Beautiful, take a little break. Most of the time, someone's gonna be able to flex it past 90 degrees. I'm gonna unbend it so it's just at 90 degrees. So I want you to hold it right there. I'm gonna try to push your foot back down to the table and you're not gonna let me do it, okay? Stabilization is on the ipsilateral PSIS. Resistance is on the posterior tibia, just proximal to the ankle joint. If I'm here, then I have to use my triceps against her hamstring, which hmm, might not go so well. So I'm going to extend my elbow and I'm gonna lean over so that I can use my leg muscles against her leg muscles. And the reason I'm leaning over the table is so that my resistance is 90 degrees to that line of pull of that muscle. I could have her move closer to me if I didn't wanna lean over that far. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to push your foot back down. Don't let me do it, stay strong, stay strong. Good. Okay, come back down. So that was three, four, and five. If we're gonna go grab the eliminated, but I'm gonna have you roll over onto your left side. What are we doing here, knee flexion? Okay, I need to like remember what I'm doing. So I'm gonna um, hold her in a knee extension, proximal to the knee, proximal to the ankle. And I would say, can you bend your knee for me? Good, so there's her gravity eliminated, that's her two. And then if we needed to differentiate between a one and a zero, back onto your belly if you don't mind. And then I'm going to prop this, I'm just gonna bend your knee a little. I'm gonna prop this up a little bit. What that does is it shortens these tendons and it puts them in, it changes the length tension relationship, making it um, a little bit easier for them to contract. So I'm gonna palpate the medial and lateral hamstring tendons here and I'm gonna give her the same cue. Can you try to bring your heel towards your bottom? And if she can't do it, but I can see or feel anything happening here, I give her a one, nothing, nothing is a zero. Okay, now we're moving on to the extension. So I'm gonna have you sit on the edge of the table. And I don't think the MMT requires, a, oh yes it does, parallel, yes it does. I don't know what I was thinking, okay. Femur parallel to the floor, so we put a little towel roll under there, good. Actually, I'm gonna have you come out just like a hair, good. What are the things we wanna talk about? Okay, we wanna talk about not grabbing, thank you, not grabbing the edge of the table. So she can put her hands down flat if she wants to. Um, the other thing we're gonna talk about, two things. We wanna talk about the hyperextension and we can talk about the high, tight hamstrings, which generally do not happen in the same people. Um, so you did not have hyperextension when I measured you, but if she did, if I had measured, let's say five degrees of hyperextension, then when she goes to straighten her knee out for her grade three, I would say, okay, great. And I would lower it five degrees until it is fully straight because we're never, you can take a break. We're never gonna provide manual resistance on a joint that is in a hyperextended position. The other thing is there are gonna be a lot of people who, I'm one of them, I'm pretty sure I'm one of them, you are too, that in this position, if you ask me to straighten my knee out all the way, I can't because I, my hamstrings are tight. So if I say, hey, kick your knee out straight and she can't do it all the way, and I'm like, oh, do you feel your hamstrings are tight? Lean back, good, rest on your hands, and now, can you and now she can straighten all the way, that's fine. That is not a compensation that's completely fine. So I'm gonna have you hold strong. I'm gonna try to push your foot back down toward the floor and you're not gonna let me do it. My stabilization hand is under, right where the towel is, pretty much. It's under the distal femur. Make sure it is proximal to that knee line and my resistance is here. And 
this is a really strong muscle as you guys are some of you are reading with your assigned article this semester but I should be able to push pretty hard okay don't let me push you down stay strong stay strong good so there's her four and her five um, okay so I we, she starts at 90 and I'm asking her to go through 90 degrees so if she could come through like more than 45 but less than 90 I'd give her a 3 minus if she could come up a little bit but not even 45 I would give her a 2 plus and then if we have to get into gravity eliminated I would have her lie on her left side and what are we doing now knee extension okay so I I'm going to support her proximal to the knee proximal to the ankle I got you you can relax there you go and I start her off in 90 degrees of knee flexion and I just say hey can you straighten out your leg for me Good, so she's able to do that full 90 degree arc. I'll give you your leg back. You can roll over onto your back. That full 90 degree arc gravity eliminated is a two. Again, if she could do more than 45, but not all the way, we'd give her a two minus. Some of it, not even half, one plus. If she can't even do that, like no movement in gravity eliminated, then we have her roll over onto her back and we're gonna test for a one and a zero. And the way that we do that is we just have her do a quad set. So an isometric contraction of the quad. So I would say, hey, can you push your knee down into the bed if you can see muscle contraction, it's a one. If I can't see muscle contraction, I'm gonna palpate and put my hand here and say, can you do that again? Push your knee down. If I can feel it, it's a one. If you can't see it, you can't feel it, it's a zero. 